From Kerma to Cosmos, Woman's Mind-Blowing Near-Death Revelation. Everyone, welcome. Over two decades have passed since her profound near-death experience, NDE, occurred, a pivotal moment that she's now unveiling after nearly two decades of personal reflection and deep introspection. This life-altering incident played out on a highway where her car careened at a breakneck 75 miles per hour, surging past the prescribed 65 miles per hour speed limit. Despite her usual aversion to seatbelts, an inexplicable intuition that had lingered for two weeks impelled her to secure it. The fates, however, had an enigmatic twist in store. Positioned on the passenger side floorboard was a bag phone, and marked for a call to a friend, but a deliberate decision to defer its retrieval until after passing another vehicle and a bridge underscored her actions. A consequential moment occurred as she, on the cusp of overtaking the other car, inadvertently disengaged her seatbelt. Stretching her arm toward the phone, she swerved suddenly due to her close proximity to the neighboring vehicle. The outcome was nothing short of harrowing, with her car hurtling nose first into the median, executing a series of flips across the median and two oncoming traffic lanes, culminating in her ejection from the vehicle. In the aftermath, her life hung by a thread as she lay, found by a passerby, some forty feet from the wreckage, face down and turning an ominous shade of blue. Luck was on her side as a nurse happened to be in the car directly behind hers, and another nurse was in the first car from the opposite direction. These two guardian angels did their best to keep her airway clear until the ambulance arrived. The ambulance sped her to her hometown, Ottawa, Kansas, where the availability of a trauma doctor, who visited just twice a month, proved fortuitous. They urgently intubated her before transferring her to the Specialized Care of Research Medical Center in Kansas City, a more capable hospital. Her conscious memory fades at this point, but she has glimpses of being outside her body, observing from a surreal vantage point. She looked down at herself, struggling to re-enter her corporeal form, surrounded by a kaleidoscope of lights and colors. She felt disconnected, as though her body was an empty vessel. The recollections become increasingly hazy as she neared her transfer to the medical facility. The next recollection is an awakening in a whitewashed room, devoid of intricate details, except for the presence of six luminous towering beings. Three stood on each side, gazing down upon her, radiating an ethereal glow, possibly resembling angels, though devoid of the classic winged visage. Her account will continue soon. She also recalls grappling with the concept of duality and her quest to unravel the enigma of her experience on this side of existence. Her room at the hospital became a focal point for this internal exploration. From her vantage point in the corner, she gazed upon her broken, lifeless body and saw it as an empty shell, a vessel devoid of the essence that had once animated it. Amidst this contemplation, her mother's presence left an indelible mark on her psyche. Her family had never been particularly religious, yet her mother sat vigilantly by her bedside, clutching her hand, and engaged in what appeared to be a heartfelt prayer. Her unwavering support proved to be a profound source of solace during this bewildering phase. As she navigated this ethereal realm, her thoughts were drawn to her family, and her younger brother, then around 16 years old, held a prominent place in her considerations. The celestial beings illustrated how her accident's ripples would impact her brother's future relationships, particularly with women, possibly precluding the possibility of successful romantic unions due to the lingering devastation he would carry. This realization was deeply humbling, exposing the extent of the intricate web of influence that binds individuals together. Her last lucid memory is encircled by an assembly of approximately twelve luminous beings. They appeared to be engaged in a deliberation, evaluating whether she should return to the physical realm or remain in her ethereal state. It was a decision that she seemed to have little agency over, and her understanding of the consequences of both choices left an indelible imprint on her consciousness. Her re-entry into the physical realm lacked the dramatic flair of movie scenes. There was no grandiose proclamation of I'm back, nor were there inquiries about what had transpired during her absence. However, she does have one vivid memory of awakening. Her friend, the same one she had intended to call on her bag phone, sat asleep by her bedside. The room was saturated with an overwhelming sensation of love and warmth, akin to the emotions she had experienced on the other side. 
In this moment, she recognized that this love is omnipresent, an underlying force that weaves its way through the tapestry of the universe. The physical injuries sustained during the accident were extensive, comprising six fractured ribs, a cracked pelvis, a broken ankle, a dislocated chin necessitating metal plates, and a splenectomy. Nevertheless, it was the profound encounter with unconditional love on the other side that resonated most deeply within her, revealing it as a fundamental force that pervades the cosmos. In her contemplations, she grapples with the illusion of fear, recognizing that it is this illusion that leads us to believe it is absent. This fear is a product of our minds, a construct that we erroneously consider non-existent. She saw it both on the other side, and when she looked at her friend, she realized it was present in him as well. It radiated from his eyes, and she marveled at the radiance within him, recognizing that he too embodied this essence. Amidst her recollections, she vividly remembered the sensation of being strapped into wheelchairs for physical therapy sessions. She felt a disconcerting vulnerability, as though she might slip out or be inadvertently rolled over. Her body felt stiff, her movements disconcertingly out of sync with her consciousness. Her memory included the tendency of her body to fold during moments of stress, even leading to drooling. Her physical limitations became glaringly apparent as she was wheeled back to her room after physical therapy. On one occasion, she observed another person in a wheelchair approaching, only to realize that it was her own reflection in a mirror. This disconcerting experience served as a poignant reminder of her ongoing detachment from her physical form. Her journey continued with a transfer to a neurological hospital. In the ambulance, she was partially awake, with a nurse providing an overwhelming influx of sensory input, which her head injuries made even more challenging to process. The next memory etched in her consciousness was her arrival at Meadowbrook, where she received her first bath. Baths had always been a means for her to decompress, but this time, the tangle of tubes and wires made a traditional bath impossible. Instead, the medical staff opted for a sponge bath, allowing her to wash her hair. However, the pivotal moment came when they introduced a special bath chair. Strapped securely into the chair, she was lowered into a bath of warm, bubbling water. It was at this juncture that she began to sense her reconnection with her physical body, an awakening within the confines of her corporeal form.